Hello again. And thank you for your patience. We are now ready to start this webinar for the London session. But before we do, may I draw your attention to the disclaimer that you can see on your screen? I know you've seen it many times before, but it has to be repeated at the start of every webinar. As you know, trading can be a very risky business. So please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose. Now, as we're a little bit, a um, few minutes later in, late in starting this morning, very, very quickly, just for the purposes of, I know we've got some new people uh, with us today. We'll be looking at the Forex market using uh, the, um, the methodology that David and I have been using and developing for almost 20 years now, which is volume price analysis. And best way to show the methodology is to look at some charts of which we have uh, uh, live charts. And I've got a couple of things I'd like to show you as well from some price action from yesterday, which has carried on today on the New Zealand yen. But we look at the forex market not just from a technical analysis uh, perspective but we also look at the fundamentals and we also look at what's happening in related markets and having mentioned the new zealand yen and the yen pairs they are uh, the yen as a currency is uh, the perfect example of how uh, movement and sentiment in one market can affect movement and sentiment in the forex market but again all will be explained as we go along if you haven't come across the methodology before or this approach it's there are books on amazon this is what we call the complete forex library it's actually a, a digital library but it has all the books uh, which covers the concepts and the approach that i have mentioned so that there's that one what we've also done is we have created some very, very specific tools for the Forex uh, market to help us, if you like, um, pick up this sentiment. The yen reflects risk on risk off sentiment. So we want to know if the yen is moving, but more importantly, in which pair is it moving and which is the strongest move? And what we'll look at today is lots of other things we're going to look, we're going to look at, but one thing in particular to um, bear in mind is that when as we had yesterday and we've had again today, sentiment is very positive in as much that the market is willing to take on more risk. There is a greater appetite for risk in as much that uh, equities are going higher, the indices, the uh, the, uh, the futures market for the S&P, the NASDAQ and the Y, and they're all moving higher. Um, as I said, that is reflected in the yen. In which pair, uh, which yen pair will depend sometimes on the session. And what happened yesterday was the yen was uh, being sold. All the yen pairs were moving higher very, very strongly. But in the morning, it was pretty much a, a morning for the pound yen. That kind of eased off a bit as, as we uh, moved into, came up towards lunchtime and just before the US session. And then it kind of rotate, it did rotate into the New Zealand yen. And that's something else to bear in mind with the Forex market. And with these tools that we've developed, you can see that at a glance. You don't have to go and inspect, you know, hundreds of charts basically because what we've done with the uh, indicators is disassembled the forex market into the movements and flows into the individual currencies and then where those flows are strongest and in what pairs and as i said and that is really really a feature of the forex market and as i said these the the, the sessions where you have new traders coming in and you know the the, the yen pairs kept moving higher but the, the 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 pair that had been the strongest in the morning wasn't the strongest in the afternoon it was the new as i said it was pound yen in the morning new zealand yen in the in the afternoon now the other thing we're going to talk about today is which is a topic that we started uh, a couple of weeks ago which is about reversals one of the uh, elements of the volume price analysis is the use of candles and candle patterns and we're just going to uh, start to look at some particular candles and what they tell us 
uh, whether we are going to have, see a reversal or not. And in particular today, looking at uh, up thrusts and hammers because they're the classic reversal, potentially reversal candles. Price action traders sometimes call them pin bars. We call them up thrusts, shooting stars and hammers. Those of you who are on the program will uh, will know the, the terms that I am referring to. And they always happen, they always occur at, uh, to be as a, if you're going to look at them from the perspective of a reversal candle, they have to come either at the top or a bottom of a move. You do get what looks like an upthrust or a hammer in a trend, but it is not uh, a potentially reverse. It has to come at the top of a move. And of course, we look at the volume uh, associated with that candle. Is that going to validate a potential reversal? or not. The other thing is to look at this also in more than one time frame because candles are formed uh, in in, if so, if you take a five-minute chart and a ten-minute chart, and you look at two candles at the top of the uh, 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 the top of a trend, if you overlay them on together, sometimes that can form the uh, the candle that you are looking for. The best way to describe this is actually looking at the chart. And then the final uh, bit for the potential reversal is: Does the candle occur at a critical level on a chart? Is there is it forming at a significant level. Now, if it does form at a significant level and the candle is then touching that level, the the, the probability that you are going to get a reversal uh, or a pullback or a correction is obviously going to be that much higher. So there's two, two of the concepts of VPA put together and uh, uh, which is the, the candles, candle patterns for reversals together with support and resistance. So before I carry on and look at my charts, I'm just going to go and pass over to David and then we'll come back and have a look at the New Zealand yen, which is actually still moving higher.